Hello, and how are you? I'm going to demonstrate to you the rentals management system. Uh, it is a system that will be used to manage tenants. In fact, you can use the same system even to manage a hotel if just only a few things that may need to be modified. So we're going to look at the first progress. So this is the login page. We will design it better. Uh, but for now, you can log in from there. So it is not complete. That's why the dashboard is not visible. But uh, when, when we'll complete it, we'll be able to put the, some good summaries on dashboard. So let me take you through of uh, what we have done so far. So we'll begin uh, the most commonly used uh, modules, they are on top. The less commonly used module on what? On bottom. For example, uh, system users, landlords, um, for houses, rooms, tenants, renting, this one uh, less are used compared to coming from top. So these are the modules that are available for now. So I'm going to explain uh, the meaning of each that you see here. So system users, as, it's, uh, as it says, is straightforward. It is for managing the users or the workers or the employees on the what in the system who can log in and who can do what. So if you want to access system users, you just simply come to this tab of system users. And to add a new system user, you just simply click on what or new. So when you click on new, you can be able to get the form of adding a what a system user. Or in case a user has forgotten their password, you want to reset their password, you can just simply come here and say edit, and you can set for them a what? A new password, and you can give them different roles. So those are what? Those are system users. So the next thing that we have, we have landlords. So before we go into practicals, I'm going to explain what is meant by each module so we can now see how each one relates to each other. So the, the first one is the landlord. So landlord, it means the owner of what? The owner of a house, since the system will manage uh, different uh, landlords. And then we'll have the houses. So houses, these are different buildings, or what you can call apart apartments, or it is like a single setup of a certain what? Of a certain group of rooms. That's what you call a house, okay? So it can be a building, it can be an apartment, it can be just a place where a group of what? Of rooms that are grouped together. Then we have rooms. So these rooms are the ones that belong to what? To houses. So before you create a room, you have to first have a house in what? In place. And uh, this is a room where now you'll be putting what? You'll be putting tenants. And then we'll be charging per room. Then we have tenants. So tenants, these are now the tenants themselves, okay? Who who rent rooms that we have in our system. Then we have renting. Renting, these are now instances of what? Of renting. Like uh, when someone rents for a period of two months, a period of three months in a specific room, this is the way I will be putting that instance. I should not confuse it with uh, maybe payment. This one is just an instance, just like an invoice. Then the payment can follow. Then we have uh, landlord payments. I mean, we are supposed to begin with tenant payments, but okay, landlord payment. So in landlord payment, this is the money that we'll be giving what? To landlord. And then we have uh, uh, tenant payments. Tenant payment, these are now payments of the invoices that I showed you here. For the what? For the renting uh, instances. So I hope you, can, you are now getting the picture of the entire system and you can see you cannot create a house before you create a landlord. You cannot create a room before you create a house. You cannot create a tenant before you have some rooms. You cannot create renting sessions before renting instances before you have what? Before you have tenants. So let me now take you back and we we'll do now the demonstration itself. So I begin with the landlord. So this is a place where I put what? Uh, landlord. So in this, uh, to add a new landlord, you just simply come here to landlord and then click on new. So when you click on new, you'll be able to put what? The landlord information. So let me put a new landlord. I can put um, uh, and then his email is and then you can put their phone numbers 
and then if they have two phone na phones you can put them there and then their address and then save so it means that <coughs> you have added the second tenant so in the column of tenants we are showing you uh, the ID of that tenant the date when he was added and then the name and also the what the, the phone numbers and then the balance if you want to see more columns, you can click here and you click on this column that you want to see. You can as well export this data to Excel file. So uh, you can see, okay, let me refresh and I'll show you the important columns here. So you have the name of the tenant, I mean the name of the landlord and also the balance that is we owe this landlord. So this is a place where I'll be seeing the amount of money, the total amount of money that you're supposed to give a what is it in landlord. So let us go ahead and create houses, okay? So I'll come here and come to house and then click on new. So I'm going to create a house and give it to a new landlord that you have created. So I'll come here to landlord and I select the landlord that I just created. And then I select the area where this house is. These areas will be dynamic. I will, will provide a section where I can modify the areas of where the houses are. So in case maybe you have maybe it's like a thousand houses, and someone need in a specific area you can simply filter by that so I put the area where the, the the houses are then you go ahead and put the house name so this house name will just help to identify um the name i mean the, the house itself okay so let me call this one hidden apartments okay so after doing that I'll go ahead and put uh, the full address where this apartment is. Uh -huh. Then I'll go ahead and put the picture of this apartment. So I can go ahead and select some picture. Let's see if I have uh, some good picture here. So after putting that, the next thing I'll have to attach maybe some attachment, maybe an agreement with this, about this room, about this housing, ETC, I can put that attachment here. And I can write some details about this house. So this is where I can put maybe all the details about the house and then you submit. So I've created um, the second part, the second house. So you can see here, among the halls that we have, we have this Mwedin apartment that we have just added. And you can see the column that we have. We have the landlord, the one who owns this house, the area where it is, and then the room, the number of rooms that are in that house, and also the date the date when it was added. So put here filters, when we filter by area ETC, they'll come here. Also, if you want to see some more columns, you can uh, click there and select the column that you want to see. So that is how we add a house. So this house has no rooms. So I'm going to show you how we can register or we can add rooms in this house. So this one, you do it only one time when you're setting up or when you're getting a new house on board. So I'll come to rooms, and then I click on new to add a new room. So the first thing that I'll select, I'll have to enter the room information. And then the second will be room pricing and then the state of the room. So let's go ahead and enter the room information. So this form is a bit uh, wide. So I'll first select the room, I mean the house where this room is. So I'll select uh, Mohidin Apartments. And then I select uh, this room number. Maybe I can say uh, floor one, FL one, maybe uh, room zero zero one. Okay, maybe you can choose the way how you can code or you can number your rooms. And then after, I put the number of bedrooms. So if it has bedrooms, I can put one or zero or number of bedrooms that are there. So I can say maybe it has one bedroom, and then I can put maybe it has two sitting rooms. I mean one sitting room, and I can put the number of dining rooms. You can have one dining room, 
and then the number of uh, indoor toilets, maybe I can put one, and then the total size, average size of rooms. So maybe I can say maybe uh, 25 by, by 25, whatever units that you're using. And then you put these uh, anemones here. So about furnishing setting, is it furnished? So you can select whether it is furnished, whether it comes with a bed, or if it doesn't, you just unselect it. So this one can uh, be helpful when you make a, maybe a mobile application for your system. The workers, I mean also people who look for rooms for renting, they can do self-service themselves by seeing what you set here. So it is very important to do that to give this wide of uh, setting. So I can say whether it has a desk or it comes with a dresser, it is it. So I put here the utilities, does it have electricity or not? Does it have water or not? So I can say I have electricity and water, uh, okay, maybe and AC. Uh, does it have free Wi-Fi or internet cable? You can choose, I can see it has both. And then does it have security? In security it has fence, maybe a security guard or a security officer. Uh -huh. So does it have laundry, parking, and gym? Okay, you can select what you want there. And then you select the main room photo, what is uh, the photo of this room, so that maybe when you create maybe a mobile application, the tenant can see the photo, or even uh, you, when you're about to give a tenant the room, you can first show them how the room looks like. So you go ahead and put here the photo of this room. It, this, will be, this is a room of an apartment, but in fact, this will be a room now for a photo. This is just for demonstration. Eh? Then after, you put other images. So if you have more than one image, you can select more than one here. But this one is the main one. This one is the, like more images. And then after, you put um, number of uh, total rooms that are available in this house. This, uh, this question is supposed to be on top there, but let me put it. Uh, so I can say maybe there are four rooms like the total rooms that are in this particular setting. I call it a room, eh? So say four. Then after we come to pricing. So how much does landlord want? So maybe you can say landlord wants to be, us to be paying him 250,000. Well, let me say, yes, landlord wants us to be paying him 250,000. Then for us, we'll be charging. So now this will be our own price now. So with our commission ETC. So maybe for us, we'll be charging this room 300,000. So after we put the room state, okay, so this one will just for, uh, for what? For, for management. So is it pending? Is it under construction? Is it under repair or it is ready? So I can say it is ready. Now, is it occupied? So if a room maybe is under repair, you can set this one states, the room state here. Then this is the room status. This one is supposed to be status. So is it occupied or it's vacant? So I can say maybe it's vacant or it's occupied. So when I submit, uh, the system will add what? Will add this room. So this column, I mean this table of rooms, we are still working on it. But right now, at least you can see the direction that we are taking. So now you can add more rooms, okay, to that particular building. But realize that, uh, but you can see this room has been added eh? and it state it is ready and available. So now, but we, we realize that uh, there is a problem that you may need to add so many rooms. Let us assume that maybe there are 10 rooms on the first floor. Now that form is so big to go ahead and, and fill it 10 times without doing a mistake. So we realize <coughs> that you may need a duplicate feature whereby you can duplicate a room and just edit. So let's say maybe you want to duplicate this room and create more one room. So I just select it here and click here and say uh, batch copy. So it's going to be copied. So I say batch copy. So the system will generate and same room with same settings, same settings exactly, but it has set it what to pending and the name has made it what copy. It made it copy because you know that this room is what is uh, just a, a replica. So you need to set it properly. But it has helped us to set exactly the same thing, OK? How do you do that? You just simply select. For example, I want to select these two rooms to be copied. I select them, and I then just say batch copy. So the system is going to copy those rooms. Now they are now four, and three are pending. 
So this table is not complete. We are still working on the presentation of it. So I can now come to this room, which has the name copy and modify it, and maybe. Uh, so it will just I'll just come to this side, and then I click here and say edit. So I can modify this room. So I remove the same the name copy and I just put two. Okay. So after putting two, the number of beds, etc. Everything has been set for me. You can see. Mine will just be to do what to maybe make it ready and set it as vacant and change the naming okay to two and then i just what i just save so that room is now done okay so i can do the same to this one okay so that one will help us to speed up so i can say maybe this one is room zero zero what three floor one it is everything is already set i just come here and modify and make it ready and submit so that one can help us to speed apart the processes so after creating rooms so it means that we now have houses or buildings with the rooms inside them so the next thing we are now going to create what now tenants maybe a person has come we want to rent our room so what do we do we just simply come here to tenants so when i come to tenants i'll first enter the information of a tenant so i click on new to enter the information of this tenant I can say Bira Faika Abira Leila and then I put her email if they have one as you can see this option but phone number is compulsory and then second phone number is option and then maybe we can put also the address of where this uh, this this tenant is coming from so I first save the tenant so after saving the tenant, now I'll go ahead and create for them now the renting instance. Maybe this tenant wants three months in just the new room that we've just added. So I just simply come to ten renting. So this is where we create now the instances. Eh? This is where you can see how much someone has paid, what the balance they have on a specific instance. So I just say that this tenant want to maybe get um, a rental of three months, okay, or four months. So I just simply after adding him, I'll call, come here and then say new renting instance. Okay. So, or you can call it invoicing a tenant. So the first thing I'll select a room. So here it will show me the rooms that are available or the rooms that are vacant. As you can see here, we have rooms. All of them, they are here. We have like uh, how many rooms? Six rooms. But uh, I'm only seeing two. I'm seeing two, it is because it is only the two, two rooms that are what? That are vacant. You can see here status. This one is uh, available, but it is already what? It's already occupied. Okay, these others are already occupied. So let us go ahead and do what? And now create an instance. So the system will show me only the rooms that are what? That are vacant. So let me say this one, I want to put him here and the amount of money and the name of the apartment. And then you select the, room, the, the tenant. This was Bira Leila. And then we put the amount that, uh, I mean the date when this tenant starts renting or when the, the time when this tenant will enter in a room. So I can say maybe we'll start counting on maybe fast or anything like that, okay? Maybe we'll, we'll start counting on this one. And then we put the number of months, how many months that they want. So the system will generate when this, with this renting instance will end. It's automatic, it will do it automatically. So I can say maybe once four months, and then I put the total discount. So if I want to give this person a discount, I can put it here. So the system will generate and remove that discount. So let me say discount zero. And then I can put some what? Some remarks. Okay, then I submit. So when I submit, the system will do what? Will uh, generate and create a billing uh, etc about this particular what about this particular renting instance okay i hope my internet is still on <laughs> sorry about that glitch so I'm going to go ahead and uh, submit this instance. So when I click on submit button, 
you can see the instance has been created. So let us first uh, look, uh, let us first see very carefully what has happened. So this, first of all, this table, I've not finalized it, but uh, it can show at least important information. Uh, okay, we're on renting session, I mean, in renting stock investor, we just created one instance. So it will show you the date when this instance was created. It will show you the house, means that here you can put a filter, where you can filter by a house. It will show you the room that has been rented. It will show you the person or the tenant who has rented this room. Uh, then also the date when the renting starts and when the renting ends. Okay, remember I said it starts at the 1st of June. And you can see it will end by 1st of what? 1st of October. Okay, so those are what? Those are four months, and the number of months will show here. Then we'll show you the amount, amount that is payable. So this one will calculate the price that we said we will be charging, and then it will reduce the discount that we provided. If you want to see the discount that you provided, you can come here and uh, show. Here we have hidden some columns because you don't want to do it to use the whole space, but you can come here and select it. So it provided zero discount. So it will go ahead and reduce this discount from the total amount and then show here the price that the tenant is supposed to pay. And then it will show you the balance that this tenant has, okay? So you can see here the balance is minus 1.2 uh, okay, million. And then it will tell you whether this tenant is still in house or he has left, he has overstayed in house. So let us go ahead and uh, look at the consequences one by one. So the first one is that the room that we we, we, we are set, it is now occupied. So I mean that if I come here and say new, you see this room has gone, it's no longer showing. We are having two rooms here. So that's the first uh, outcome. The second one, if you come here to what? Uh, if you come here to landlords, okay? If you come to landlords, you can see here, this landlord, we have his two millions. Why two millions? Uh, wait, let me see. Uh, because how many rooms have been have we rent from this land landlord? Let me see. It's supposed to be one million at least. I think it charge it double charged, okay? Because it's supposed to be one million. I'm going to find out how we fix that, okay? But the whole point here, it will now come here and show the amount of money that you're supposed to pay this landlord. So it uh, creates a bill for landlord it, once we do what? Once a tenant rents a room in their what? In their respective building. I think this balance has some issue. We're going to see how we fix that one. But that's the whole point, okay? Then after, uh, after doing that, uh, it means that this room is now what? Is now occupied. If you come here to rooms, and you come to this room that you just put someone, it is now occupied, and you cannot put another person. So after creating this renting instance, the next thing is uh, this tenant will start paying, okay? But uh, before you go to paying, what if maybe the, the tenant has canceled for some reason, the tenant has shifted, the tenant has uh, done anything, like the tenant has left, and you want to make this room available. So you have to come to this instance, and set this room free by clicking on edit and uh, select the room and no, by coming to that room and then you select it going to work on these ones and make it what and make it uh, available make it vacant okay so if that tenant has left okay so another thing here uh, the system will be showing you will be showing you whether the tenant has overstayed or not. So it means that uh, if this tenant spends, uh, passes this period that we provided here, before he maybe uh, rents another, the system will be, able, will be able to show you whether the tenant has overstayed in a what in that particular room. So that is when you can know that uh, there's a tenant that you owes you and has not paid. Uh, you can change here some remarks, you can put some comment on this particular renting uh, instance. Uh -huh. So after doing that, so the next thing now, the tenant will start paying this particular amount of money. So he can either give you the whole money or he can pay in, 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 in 
batch in parts. So for example, let us say this pay this tenant has just paid maybe one million. Okay, and we are going to remain maybe with the two hundred thousand that owes us. So we'll just simply come here to payments, okay? So this is where I'll be uh, putting the payments, okay? So I come here to new. So when you click on new, we'll go ahead and select, uh, no, sorry, this is for landlord. This is for tenant payment. You come to tenant payment and then click on new. And then you select uh, the renting incidents. Remember, these are the incidents we have. So the details will be here about the particular renting. So you can see on this particular renting, this tenant has paid maybe uh, maybe one million. Okay, and then we say if it was paid by cash, you put the receipt number. I mean the person who received the, this money, uh, because this is going to be used by multiple people. If he paid by bank, we put the bank and the transaction ID there. If it's paid by mobile money, you put the phone number that received this money and what the transaction id this one will help to know where the money went so i can submit so if i do that you'll see um this is a receipt so this is just like a payment now the receipt so it will tell you this landlord i mean this tenant of this name has paid this particular amount of money and the balance is this and then the details will be here cash received from this person being payment of rent this from this and then the invoice number will be there so you see that is 200 balance so if you come here to the renting incidences you can see also the balance has updated so that's when you can know maybe on this particular renting incidence this land this tenant owes me this particular amount of what amount of money so here in the total it will be showing you uh, the balances the total balance that tenants owe you and here it will be showing you the particular amount of money that you have made from what from particular i mean from some particular period so here i'm going to put a filter where i can filter from which period to which period and then you'll be able to see how much of money how much money you've made and how much money that uh, people owe you in a particular what particular period so that is the progress of the system that we are building then the next part will be, of course, totally finishing everything. But uh, this is like 60% uh, of what we could possibly do. And then the remaining part will be like uh, fixing a few errors that you uh, that we have noticed, uh, creating the dashboard, being able to print this receipt, and uh, finishing the whole system. And that will be in the what? In the next, uh, that will be done in the, by the next what? By the next update. Thank you. Let me comment. Smile there. Yeah. Comment.